guys, welcome to Wildwood. It's been a long time, I know, hopefully not that much uh, longer. Uh, my name is Holly, I'm one of the senior keepers here at Wildwood and I'm going to be doing a little bit of a question and answer, a little bit of an update for you guys. And um, Please bear with us, because this is our first live stream and we're hoping it's all going to go well. Um, and please keep your comments coming. We've had quite a few emails already with some of you asking questions, so thank you for that. But please keep liking, uh, post the comments on the live stream and we'll try and pick them up. Uh, as and when we see them. I do have a team around me helping me and we are all adhering to social distancing so don't worry so we're going to try and make it run as smoothly as we can. Um, so some of the questions that we've already been sent in by email um, we've had a few but like I said please keep them coming. Um, the first one was by Ben um, and he's asking basically because there's no public in the park and it's obviously quite a lot quieter as you can see um, what are the native wildlife uh, doing that's around here? And um, we've had quite a few sightings of some quite interesting birds. We've had lots of butterflies, and normally the bird song is quite loud, although they seem to have taken a break at the moment. Um, so we've had some nuthatches around the playground, uh, but they're obviously not on the equipment. Um, they're spending a lot of time in the oak trees, so we're hoping that they're going to be breeding there soon, so fingers crossed. Uh, we've also had some chiff chaff, which is really nice spring sound, um, so they've all visited uh, the park as of, as of March. And out in the Bleen, so that's the part of the, that's outside the park, um, where we go and get various um, food for the animals. Um, we've got some green tiger beetles out there, which are really cool. They're these weird little beetles that live in the ground and they kind of, um, as they're larvae, they catch anything that's walking over. So that's a really cool sighting to see out there. We've got loads and loads of butterflies around the park at the moment, mainly broomstone and peacocks. But they're a regular sighting floating around, so spring really, really has sprung. In terms of plants, we've got dog violet, uh, wood anemone, and lesser celandine. Now, all three of those are really important flowering plants that are an indicator of ancient woodland. So it's really special that we've got them here, right on our doorstep at Wildwood. Um, and then we're all going to be waiting, hopefully, for when you come and visit. Um, but if not, you'll have to wait till next year and next spring because it really is a season of change at the moment. And as you can see, we're getting a lot more greenery coming through. The oaks are definitely uh, much far forward than they, than they seem to be uh, a couple of weeks ago. The birch is really coming out as well. So yeah, the site is really changing visually um, and hopefully that will carry on until summer when you're, uh, when you're gonna be coming back. Um, anyone that's got any more questions, please feel free to comment, like, um, and email us and that also is on Instagram we've got a couple of our people also checking our Instagram feed so please chuck questions our way uh, and we'll try and do our best to answer as many as we can another question I've had uh, yesterday by Michelle she's asking about the baby fallow deer so I know uh, at the uh, end of summer last year we got a new uh, fallow baby um, she still doesn't have a name oh no she does have a name what is her name? <laughs> what's her name go? Staffy. <laughs> so her name is Staffy. Um, she'll be coming up to a year in the summer and she's been really great at being integrated into the herd. So the older ladies that she's in with have kind of taken her under her wing. Um, and she's still quite sassy, isn't she? She kind of pushes her way in uh, for the food, which is really, really good because uh, she showed that she's not just the little one in there. She's very much fighting to get forward uh, to the food and, and to push her weight around a little bit. We got a question. Yep. So this is our new ingenious <laughs> way of adhering to social distancing uh, whilst getting the questions to me. So this is cool. Uh, this is from Terry on Facebook and he's asked me do any of the animals behave more openly when there are no visitors? Um, simple answer, yes. You can definitely see it on our more shy animals. So our wolves, for example, are loving the fact that there's no visitors around. They're running around and basically acting like puppies. Uh, which they kind of already are with the ages in there. Our links are also running around and um, being a lot more confident. We've obviously got some youngsters in there, uh, Torridon and Flossie, um, and they're definitely acting more confident with, with the lack of the public and the nice, serene, quiet nature that Wildwood is. Um, and the birds as well. The birds seem to be just carrying on with day-to-day uh, -to -day life as they would normally. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely seeing a change in some of our animals. Thank you for the question as well. And thank you to all our members and everyone that's already given us loads of support at this really difficult time. We really appreciate it. Uh, and that's kind of why we're trying to bring the zoo to you, to be honest, because we feel like uh, we, we still want your interest and we still want you to be engaged and feel like you're part of the park because we are just one big Wildwood family, as cheesy as that might sound. Um, so another person has kind of asked about the beavers. And it was a pretty general question. So I thought I'd try and get our 
beaver keeper in. So this is Stuart, he's one of our keepers here and he works with the beavers. Big round of applause. Yeah. And we're going to adhere to social distancing. Um, so I'm going to have a chat with Stuart about the beavers. Um, you may have seen on our previous Facebook post that we did rescue one very recently. So I'm kind of going to kick off and ask how many we've got and we'll come back to her a bit later. So Stuart, hi. Morning Holly. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm, I'm Stuart, I'm one of the keepers here at Wildwood. Uh, in particular I do work with the beavers, I've tried to specialise with them a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'll be answering a few questions. So, number of beavers, we currently have three. Uh, so we have our venerable old female Bertha, who's been at the park for 13 years now. Um, uh, she's the one that you've most likely seen on display recently. Uh, we also have our rescue that Holly just mentioned. Not certain precisely how old she is, because obviously she's a wild animal. Um, and we think she's a female. <laughs> uh, that's largely from her size and behaviour we've made that estimation. We were supposed to have an expert coming to show us how to, how to tell the difference, because it's actually very difficult. Uh, but with restrictions, he was unable to make it. Um, so she... She's, uh, I generally call her Stephanie, or Aww. if it does turn out that it's actually a boy, it'll be Stefan. <laughs> and finally, we have a, a young male who's about nine months old. He's off display at the moment uh, that we're calling Wally, and he came to us from Germany. So that's, those are the beavers that we have at the moment. So they're, are they all housed together? No, at the moment? Uh, they are currently all separate. Um, when aforementioned expert comes to tell us how to uh, sex beavers, he should be bringing a young female to pair up with Wally. Um, Bertha will stay on her own. Stephanie, we're not sure what we'll do with her because she's a wild animal. There's just some legal stuff we have to be careful with there. Um, so Wally, Definitely will get partnered at one point, but just not with the girls we've got at the moment. Because they're much bigger than him. Uh, they would flatten him. <laughs> ah, so are the females bigger than the males when it comes to beavers? Yeah, then? generally. And they do a lot more work as well. The boys are quite ah. lazy. Um, <laughs> they are. Uh, I was saying about behaviour, looking at Wally's Lodge versus Stephanie, the work that they've done. Wally basically hasn't done anything. Oh. Um, he, he's not very house proud, whereas Stephanie has done loads of work on the little lodge that she's got where she's at the moment. Uh, moved loads of wood chip around, branches in place, really reinforced it and weatherproofed it. Um, and she, there's much more work that she's done, and she's been in where she is much less time than Wally, so it's a big difference. Oh, okay. So Bertha, back to the old girl, or the one that's been here the longest. Yeah. How old is she? Not certain, but she was a wild animal. So I say oh, she's wow. been at the park 13 years. That just over. That was first uh, of April, I think, actually. Um, so she's probably actually coming up to 14 this year. Uh, I imagine she'll turn that about the same point that that Wally will turn. They are annual breeders, okay. so their, their birthdays will generally be roughly the same time. Cool. So Stephanie, Stephanie, the rescued beaver. Yes. For those of our viewers that haven't seen the Facebook post that was a couple of a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago, I lose track of time now because of the whole uh, lockdown. When are we? <laughs> <laughs> what year is it? Um, <laughs> no, back to Stephanie. So what what happened? Where was she? How did it all go in terms of the rescue? Uh, so we got a call early in the morning from a member of the public at um, Sandwich Bay saying that there was an animal out on the out on the beach um, so myself the head keeper and you came to help us all bundled into a van with a crate some some nets got down there as quick as possible um, the member of the public was very helpful in making sure that the animal that the beaver didn't go back into the sea um, so what, why, why didn't we want her to go back into the sea? Well, for one, we didn't want to lose track of that. And also, beavers are freshwater animals. They're, you know, they're meant to live in our lakes and rivers. When they get into the sea with the salt, it's not good for them. Um, so if, if she'd been in there for a long time, it can be very bad for their health and they often don't last very long. 
because she did so well, we are thinking that she possibly wasn't actually in the pursuit for very long, if at all. Um, so, yeah, that's why it's so important for her not to go back in the sea. Uh, and yeah, and we, we got there, she did seem quite quite tired. Yeah, she was just not really doing yeah. much. Uh, we, were, we, were expect, we were anticipating a slightly more difficult catch. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as you will remember, I basically walked up with a net and went, very Got professional. It, it yes. made us look like experts. Yeah. Well, we are experts. Beavers are integral to, to Wildwood's history, aren't they? So yeah. it was really nice to to see that rescue through. I think. Yeah, uh, it was it was good for her to do that and see it go well, and to see that she's doing still doing so well at the moment. Yeah, she's yeah. thriving. So fingers crossed, um, and look for any updates about beavers, um, and yeah, any of our other future projects at the park. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ollie. I think I've got another question. Round of applause, Stuart. I have a studio audience, social distancing as well, so thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I've got loads of questions from my trusty sidekick. So, Emma on Facebook, uh, as keepers, do you have favourite animals you care for? Everyone always asks this question. Um, my answer is normally, because we shouldn't really have favourites, but my answer is normally whatever animal I'm stood next to. Um, but yeah, inevitably you always get a bit of a soft spot when you agree, guys. You get one, one or two. <laughs> You'll see one of our keepers later. It's quite clear who her favourites are. Um, but yeah, you always get a bit of a bit of a uh, rapport with an individual or, or a particular species. You kind of quite like them the most. But yeah, thank you for that, Emma. Uh, like I said, keep them coming, people. You can see I've got a watch here. So yeah, email them, comment them. Please like us and love our post as well. Uh, we're really trying to get these um, live feeds uh, sort of off the ground to bring the zoo to you at home. Hannah, uh, do the animals get excited when they see keepers coming to feed them? Uh, yes. Um, if anyone has dogs or cats or birds or anything at home, um, as soon as you pick up their food bowl, you know they get the, the dribble. Some of them may do a little tap, some of them spin, and you get the exact same thing here at the zoo. Uh, but just most things are a bit heavier, and they've got a lot of sharper teeth, um, so <laughs> they attract more attention when they're running. But yeah, they definitely get excited, especially when they see the same food bowl. Um, and we try and give them food in different ways uh, to stop them expecting it, different times, and to give them different foods as well to try and keep it as different as possible. That's that's the best thing you can do for animals here. Uh, in, in a wildlife park. Adam, do the bears still show any stereotypical behaviours? Stereotypical <laughs> behaviours is a tricky one. Um, the most common, not just bears, this is for all animals, so it kind of relates to the, to the question before about food and anticipating food. That's probably the most common one, and you quite often see it in zoos that have tigers, for example, that have a set feed day, or any big cat, and um, they kind of know when it's coming. They've got a clock, they don't need to know that you're coming, they know when you're coming, especially when it's the same time every day. But um, the fantastic work that has gone into uh, caring for our bears here in the six years they've been here has seen a massive reduction in their stereotypical behaviours. If any of you saw them when they first arrived, you would think they were totally different bears, totally different animals to the boys that we've got up there now. Um, they are, well, they're acting like proper bears now, aren't they? Doing bear stuff, uh, which isn't a lot. You know, it could be playing with a stick or lounging around in the pool. Um, but the stereotypical behaviours, you know, the worrying behaviours that we saw originally um, have massively reduced. And that's all down to the expertise that the keepers that care for those guys have given. Um, so I think they deserve a round of applause. Um, thank you, please. Um, next, that was from Adam, by the way. So thank you very much, Adam. I'm getting all of a fluster with my card. Please keep commenting and liking and sending emails in. We are getting them through and I'll try and answer as many as I can. Roxanne, how fast can a wolf run? Fast. Faster than me. <laughs> Which is all you need to know. I don't know. I don't know That's an exact figure. 25 miles an hour. About 25 miles an hour. We'll go with that one. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Definitely faster than us. So time, please don't yeah. try and go anywhere near a wolf. Yeah. Keep going for a long time. Though. Yeah, it's not how quick they go. Um, it's not like a cheetah that relies on that instant burst. Um, wolves bring down their prey with stamina because they can just keep going and going and going and going. And they outrun uh, in terms of, um, not pace, in terms of um, time. And they tire out their prey. So it's, um, and that's why the pack works so well. Um, so thank you for that. Fiona, how old is Desmond? She's about 10. About 10 years old. So in terms of red deer and stags, how does that 
sort of equate to that's a quite a good age, it's isn't past it? His prime. He's past his prime. Yeah, he, does, yes. <laughs> he is at the moment because he's got no antlers. So, <laughs> okay, Kevin, do some animals feel more open when there are busy visitors? Not quite sure how what you mean by that. They're probably more comfortable. Well, it it varies depending on the species. Some species don't care that the visitors are there, particularly our birds, I would say. Uh, and then more of the sensitive individuals, not necessarily species. And um, they like the quieter, the quieter times. Um, so yeah, hope that answers your question, Kevin. <coughs> Rhiannon, is the whole park 40 acres? And how big is the wolf enclosure? <laughs> how big is the wolf enclosure? Yeah, like One and a half acres. One and a half acres of wolf enclosure. Their enclosure is about one. About one acre. So yeah. One like half, yeah. One and a half, one, 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 yeah. So they're quite big spaces, to be honest. Um, so thank you for that, Rhiannon. We are about 40 acres. And the, and the park is 40 acres, yeah. So very well researched for your question, Rhiannon. Um, have we got any more questions or shall I bring in another keeper? I might be, oh, we have some questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I trade you? Thank you, Boo. Karen, shout out to Karen. Hello. <laughs> hi, Mum. Pam. Is that Karen's mum? Okay, hi, Pam. Shout out from Wildwood to you. Mary, I have a question from Mary. Does Wildwood think they will be able to aid somehow with lynxes or wildcat rehabilitation if Scotland allows reintroduction? That is a controversial subject. Um, we're, we're breeding or have been breeding our wildcats for, God, how many years now? <laughs> so for quite some time and we've been really successful with our wildcat breeding and I think the opportunity to get involved in any sort of project like that would would not be turned down at face value um, at the moment currently I don't know if there's any uh, progress on that yet but any updates with our wildcat breeding and lynx breeding keep in touch with our social media because uh, any updates will be put on there as you well know if you've been following us for a while Rhiannon again thank you Rhiannon why do you keep red deer when they are overpopulated already why can we species that aren't endangered that's a good question um, here at Wildwood, we if you've ever been to the park before, you'll know, but for those of you that don't know, we're concentrating on our British or native fauna, what would be native. Um, and red deer is arguably one of our most iconic species. Uh, they're currently the largest living land mammal in the UK. Um, so I think it's kind of relevant that we have that, and they're really impressive. I mean, when Des has those antlers, he looks phenomenal. Um, but yes, there is no there is no conservation value to them in terms of their current populations, uh, but I think as an educational tool, um, they're really important because they give a whole, um, they add a dynamic to, to what we're trying to represent here at Wildwood, which is our native British fauna. Uh, but thank you for your question, very good. Keep your questions coming, guys. Uh, we're definitely getting through them, I think. Uh, Julia, last year, I think you were raising money to buy some woodland with Kemp Wildlife Trust for rewilding. How has that project gone? Watch this space is all I can say. Um, it's very exciting. Um, but yeah, again, keep updated with our social media pages and you'll see, hopefully, in the next few months uh, what has been happening up there. But a lot of, like you say, a lot of work has been going on and a great partnership has been formed with Kent Wildlife Trust that we're really, really, really excited about. So yeah, stay posted. I want to talk about wolves. Do you? Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> so this is Liz, guys. Liz Hello. is also one of our senior keepers. Um, and you, uh, yeah, someone asked earlier about some favourite animals. Um, I'm Three guesses sit. as to who Liz's nice. are. <laughs> I just want to plug as well these t-shirts that Liz is wearing. You can see my one is a bear one. Um, they are now available, I think, to order. Are they available? To, they're available to order on our website. So head over there um, and purchase yourself some t-shirts. Uh, we do hoodies or sweatshirts, and I think there's a bag as well. Um, yeah, so we're trying to model them for you. <laughs> okay, Liz. Hello. Hi. How are you? Are you enjoying the weather? Loving the weather. Exactly. Spring is here. It's exciting. Are the wolves enjoying the weather? The what are they doing? They are loving <laughs> this weather. Absolutely. They're running around like fruitcakes today. <laughs> what do you miss it? In the, in the sun. In the sun, <laughs> leaping over in the pool, rushing around. Yeah, it's great. So, uh, relating to one of the questions earlier, have you seen a change in them with no public, or are they just acting definitely, like the goose they Definitely, definitely. They're, they're naturally nervous creatures, aren't they? So they like to hide, and they're very, we've spent a long time working with them, so we've conditioned them to kind of get used to people. Mm. But obviously, they're naturally nervous, so when there's lots of people about, they will sort of hide away a little bit. So they're it's loving the very it. Very different. Out, exactly. To our dogs at home, right? 
very, very different. So same sort of uh, behaviours. You see a lot of behaviours in our dogs that we see in the wolves, but obviously they're a lot more, a lot more nervous. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, they're enjoying themselves at the minute. So we've, got, we've had pups here, right? We've bred the yep. wolves here before. Very exciting. Their birthday will be coming up soon. Their second birthday on the 7th oh. of May. So watch this space. We'll be doing something really exciting. So if they're coming up to two, yes. does that mean that they're fully-fledged adults? Or are they... They are coming up to sexual maturity, about mm -hmm. two years of age. But our boy, they're four pups we had, so they've all been castrated. So we can't have any puppies running around. So there shouldn't be the competition between them, or as much competition. Yep. But there will still be a little bit. And so you might see that there'd be a lot of noise where they're trying to sort out their hierarchy and things. But Who's yeah. the boss in there? You talk about hierarchy, who's the boss? Who's the boss? So we've got Odin and Nuna are the parents. They're the alphas. So they kind of lead in different ways. Odin will kind of, you see, I don't know if you've seen on the videos where we walk past, Odin will mm -hmm. rush up, he's protecting his pack. So he will go around the boundary protecting, whereas Nuna will lead from afar. Ah. And she'll kind of watch, she's the clever one. She'll, she'll so you've got brains afar. and you've got brawn. Exactly. Perfect, perfect mix. <laughs> so they work, but then obviously you've got the four pups as well, they're going to compete. And so that right. changes all the time. So Maximus might be on top one day, and then he might be brought down a peg or two. Okay. But Odin and Nuna, they're, they're, mum and dad, they're in charge. Okay. So you mentioned the pups, and you uh -huh. mentioned Max. So can we maybe, for those uh, viewers that don't really know our pack, or uh -huh. can't tell them apart, because I know even some of the keepers do, <laughs> um, I struggle with them sometimes. Can we maybe go through the the parts yeah, sure. and this, like how you can tell them apart, yeah. behavioural, physically. Okay, well, um, we start with Odin. We start with, with Dad. He's a bit bigger. He's a lot darker. He's sort of got a squarer face. Beautiful, Beautiful. Wolf. Beautiful. Whereas Beautiful. Luna, <laughs> Mummy, she's a lot more, uh, she's got a narrower face, right. narrow muzzle, a bit lighter coloration. Okay. Now, I describing Odin first because Maximus, to me, is Odin number two. Right, okay. He's Odin Junior. He <laughs> follows him about everywhere. And he looks the same, obviously, a little bit fluffier. But then we get to know the differences, and then in the summer their coats change. Oh, so and then you're back to the <laughs> um, Tibbs, he's got like a little rosette in the middle of his forehead. Okay, rosette, like a cow's lick almost. Yeah, like a bit of flat fur, so that's how you can tell him apart. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that's probably chewing sticks, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> and being naughty. But, oh, he's yep. the naughty one. He's okay, one, yeah. he's so he winds mummy up. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Gus is like lovely blonde locks. Okay. Not fluffy, non locks there. And Minimus is the one, he's a nervous one. Okay. So he'll be the one sort of hiding away. But they're all a, a great mix of mum and dad. Oh, so brilliant. there's lots of differences, but you kind of have to have them all together sometimes. Yeah. To them <laughs> and they all bring out their own characters and they've all got their own personalities. Definitely. And, they, yeah. and it depends who they're with as well. Oh, right. They're okay. A pack. It's a big mix. It's a big family mix. It's not this sort of linear hierarchy we all thought. Yeah. They all work together and act differently depending who's there. Perfect. So, yeah. So you said that you've done a lot of work with the wolves and that they're really nervous. What sort of work have you been doing to try and get them used to people and to, you know, unify that pack um, unit? When they first came in, they're naturally really nervous. Mm -hmm. So we had Odin and Nuna that were separate. So what we used to do is go up there. We went up for months just sitting down with our backs to the fence, just putting a little bit of meat on the fence okay. to get them to come over to show that we're okay. We're, you know, yeah, we're we safe. mean food. We, we, yeah, we mean food, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we mean food. And, and so we built up that trust over a long period of time. Which is important, right? It's yeah. very important because we need to give them medication. We need to shut them in. We need mm -hmm. to go and clean out their enclosure. And we don't want them to be scared of us. We want to build up that trust. Exactly. But we want them to act naturally as well. So we spent a long time doing that. And then eventually Odin and Nuna would come up, which is an amazing feeling. Yeah. You know, they're trusting us, <laughs> taking food from us. And then when the pups were born, we were lucky because they copied. Oh, Mum and Dad came okay. over. So then the pups would be tiny puppies. <laughs> they, they came over. <laughs> Who's so a favourite? <laughs> <laughs> as well, so which is absolutely amazing. So we can manage them in that way. As I say, get medication, little treats in for them as well. Perfect. Um, so that's what we originally started doing. And then obviously they're coming up to two. They yeah, want to so yeah. go hunting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, wanna, they're gonna, they want to work their food. We've all been followed. You've seen on the videos. Yeah. They like to stalk. And then you turn around, they look the other way. That's what they naturally do. They're a predator. Right. So we've been working on something called a recall. A little bit similar when you do with your dog, where you whistle or you ask them to come, where they run to you. Right. We want to get them running. They'd be running, as you were talking about earlier. They, you know. The stamina thing, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. They track their prey and they, they chase. Right. So that's what we want to do. <laughs> so we have to <laughs> try and do that at Wildwood. So what we've been doing is trying to, blowing a whistle, throwing some chicken over, which is their favourite, and getting them to rush over. 
and then to rush over to another side of the enclosure as well. We want them to work for their food a little right. bit. But they've got to react to the whistle and not just chicken being thrown I over. See. So they've got to think they're clever animals and we want them running to get their big prey at the end. So their food. with this recall, which is f- when you see it, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, do you always go in the same places in the enclosure? No. Because like you said, they're very clever animals. So so do you think at, the, at the beginning, we, we had to. Okay. Because they had to, they were, why are you throwing chicken at me? You know, they had to try and figure out what we were doing. <laughs> um, but they're clever. They're right. really smart. So if just two of us went up there, they know that if I throw it, then Christine will throw it in a minute's time. So they're just poodle off you know, see Christine. <laughs> they know, they can work us, but they, you know, we want them to think. Yeah. So then we'd stand in different places. We'd blow a whistle at different times, make them really think about it. Cool. Or then just pretend to throw chicken over and there's nothing there. Oh, okay. They've so got you do to like listen to that one. whistle and Nuna's on it. She's <laughs> the clever one. Odin's not too sure yet. <laughs> get them. Get them. So it's all going well with the wolves? It's all going really well and then hopefully we get it with a, like, a few positions and maybe we can incorporate that into some sort of experience. Because so you already do that. a wolf experience, right? We do an amazing wolf experience. Cool. So what does that involve? For those of you that haven't done it, what does that it involve? Because I'm sure our, our viewers amazing. will be interested. We take you slightly behind the scenes. Um, so you come up with the keepers, we go along the keeper path and hopefully the wolves will come over and we do the condition I was talking about, we do a little bit of that. Okay. Um, so they come over and we just sit and we watch them. We want to watch them. Oh. And you get just that bit closer. And because they're used to the keepers being there right. and associate us with nice things. And the trust that and you the have. the trust right? that we've built up. They sit with us. The wolves look over okay. They're with the keepers. And Perfect. we just watch them. So and you're part of the pack almost. Yeah. Nice. For those of you who do have experiences booked, um, we are working our way through emails. But if you haven't heard anything, do email. But um, yeah, we can't commit to anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because obviously we still don't know when lockdown will end. But yeah, don't worry, essentially. Uh, and please still continue to inquire and book about experiences because I'm sure when we reopen, whenever that is, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we will still be running them. And there'll be updates, so like Liz said, to our experiences too. Thank cool, thank you very thank much you. for joining in. Have a <laughs> Okay, uh, so hi guys. For those of you that may have just joined us or maybe not, my name's Holly. I'm a senior keeper here at the park. Oh, and I have some questions already. Uh, please... Even though I've got questions, please, please keep chucking them down uh, on our comments and in our emails and stuff because we're really trying to get through as many as we can for you. Thank you to those already that have already emailed in and and got your questions to us. Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Uh, Hannah wants to know, how would you recommend members of the public help with the conservation of British wildlife? Are careers in conservation important? I would like to do it in the future. Um, you're definitely talking to the right group of people. Uh, Wildwood and its um, presence within British conservation as well is, is, is up there. It's like top, top tier, definitely. Um, I definitely think that conservation careers are important, especially in the current climate. The last year or so we've had in the media about you know, how our uh, uh, ecosystems and habitats are all breaking down and you know, extinctions. I think we really need to start preserving um, what we've already got before we lose it all, and I think this lockdown, as much as it is a bit of a, a bit of a nuisance, um, you are starting to see people appreciate what, uh, wildlife and nature a little bit more. So we're hoping that, um, yeah, that might in, uh, create a, an influx in people like yourself that has an interest in conservation. Um, definitely stick with it. Um, in terms of uh, getting a career in British wildlife, volunteering uh, for a wildlife trust, a zoo, any sort of conservation charity. Um, and just really absorbing as much as you can um, to bring your experience to the table when it does come to finding a job. Um, but yeah, we also have volunteering opportunities here at Wildwood uh, on a range of different uh, departments, conservation keepers and rangers. So if, and if that's anything that you're interested in, drop us an email. I'm sure someone will be able to get back to you. Obviously, it can't uh, happen at the moment because of lockdown. But once everything is hopefully back to normal, um, you'll be able to uh, be contacted um, from our team. So thank you very much, Hannah. Kevin, we've had two Kevins today. Uh, what do you feed the bears? What a complicated <laughs> question. <laughs> so bears are, they're part of the carnival group, but they kind of don't stick to that as a rule. So they're not just meat eaters. In fact, they probably don't eat a huge amount of meat. Wouldn't you agree? They A lot of the material they eat is vegetable. So yeah, so um, at the moment in spring, they're gorging on all the fresh grasses and the, the new shoots that are coming through. Now, all the books will tell you that dandelions are the first thing, <laughs> the first thing that they will eat. Fluff and scruff, though, 
We'd have been uh, spoiled for the last six years of being here at Wildwood. Um, they don't touch the dandelions, do they? They want the veg. Okay. So we feed them. Uh, a it got, quite a lot of work goes into formulating the diet for the bears, and it was one of the most intense processes to get right, I think, for those boys when we rescued them. Um, so uh, there's quite a lot of root veg that go into the diet. They also love a chicory, uh, and they love a carrot. Like an apple as well, don't they? Parsnips. They also have uh, a mix of different dry feeds as well, just so that we're making sure that they get all the vitamins and minerals that they need. Um, but crucially, this diet, in terms of what we give them and how much we give them, changes depending on the season. So come summer, for example, when they're really piling on the pounds ready for torpor, um, they'll move on to their really high fat content foods and, and we give them fish here and that goes down a treat doesn't it? Uh, how long are they on fish roughly? About six weeks. About six weeks and these are big fish um, and yeah they really really gorgeous. But they eat things like eggs, peanuts, uh, pumpkin seeds which we've discovered is a big hit and um, so yeah we're always trying to give them uh, new and interesting foods as well in terms of enrichment and trying to keep it nice and simple and different for them as well. So I hope that answers your question I know it was a really long answer. Uh, anyone else that's new following the feed, feed please Send us your comments and your questions. Give us a like, give us a like for Scruff, a like for Fluff, whichever you like. Um, and we'll try and uh, pass that love around to all the other keepers and the animals as well. But yeah, please keep engaging with us. We want to try and bring the zoo to you, seeing as you can't come here today. Uh, Cassandra, hi Cassandra. Uh, have you got any plans for new animals being introduced to Wildwood? So does that mean new animals coming in? Um, I think probably the biggest one uh, that we've just released a um, sort of new campaign for are our baby bears. So uh, Wildwood, it, due to our successes with Fluff and Scruff, who are our rescue bears here, uh, and the massive turnaround that they've that they've had, um, we're now opening up our doors to a pair of year-old cubs um, that are that have been abandoned. Um, they're currently at a facility that have rescued them, and they're holding them for us. Um, they're called Mish and Lucy. So it's a boy and a girl, and they are incredibly cute. Please look through our past videos. You'll see our general director. He would have done a video about the campaign for those guys. And there's a really cute video, loads of different images of them. Um, they're that typical fluffy bear, out of proportion uh, age at the moment. So they're really, really cool. Um, so we're trying to raise money for that at the moment. So if you're interested in that, please visit our website and our social media pages, and it will give you all the information that you may need. Um, but yeah, so they're being held at facility at the moment, and we're hoping to bring them in. They should be here by September, October, so not long, really. Um, and, but they are going to be temporarily housed here at Wildwood in Kent um, because they're destined for their permanent home down in our sister site at Wildwood Escot. So a lot of work is going on very quickly to try and get everything sorted for them. Uh, but they are coming and I think we'll all agree that's probably the most exciting animal that we're getting in. Um, so yes, yeah, stay posted and hopefully you'll be able to see Mish and Lucy very, very soon. Uh, it's all very exciting stuff. So thank you, Cassandra. Christian. How are the ferrets and polecats doing? How are they doing? They're fine. They're fine. <laughs> They're loving the sun, aren't they? Certainly They're just are. as mischievous as they normally are. Um, yeah, just as voracious of food. They're just crazy, aren't they? Just hyperactive all the time. But yeah, they're doing very, very well. Thank you very much, Christian. Kevin, where are the wild adders in Kent and how common are they? Any, any heathland. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Just... He, a, a, a dense heath um, habitat. Are they common in woodlands, would you say, in Kent, or is it just really? In general, they're not very common across the country, they're thought to be in decline. So, for those of you that can't hear that, um, adders are actually thought to be in decline. So, a lot of people take for granted, I think, are reptiles and are amphibians, and not a lot of people are that enthused by them. Um, but adders are unfortunately uh, disappearing from a lot of pockets, and that's mainly due to the fact of the habitat de uh, degradation and fragmentation. So we mentioned heathland, and um, that's probably one of our habitats that is yeah, declining quite rapidly. And they rely on that because it's um, a mosaic of temperatures. So reptiles are obviously reliant on their environmental temperature. And with heathland, it creates loads of different opportunities for cooler and warmer temperatures so they can bask in the sun, but they can also find refuge. And with that habitat disappearing, they don't have that complex nature in their environment. And unfortunately, we're losing our reptiles and amphibians, particularly our adders, which is very, very sad. But we do have adders here at the park, and they are uh, definitely taking advantage of the sun. Um, the three girls in there are always out and about on that rock, aren't they? <laughs> so yeah, do, once we're open, please head over to our reptile pitch. You'll, you'll probably see see them in the in the bright sunshine there, uh, basking away. Keep your comments coming, people. Keep your emails coming. Uh, we're trying to get through them as much as we can. We uh, we do have a team sort of scribbling away with our little uh, cards here. 
Julia. Hi, Julia. You did a feature on four-lined snakes. Are they or were they once native to the UK? Ah, yes, yeah, so that would have been our Head of Living's collections the other day. You did a video. For those of you that didn't see that, head over to our Facebook um, and you'll be able to watch that. He was handling a couple of our snakes, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, so are they or were they once native? No, is my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a, a bit of a, a mishmash collection of our reptiles, haven't we? Because we've taken in a lot of ex-pets and, and, and reptiles that have come in from other collections. But um, hopefully uh, our expansion of our European collection will happen in the, uh, in the near future. Hi, Lewis. Or is it Louis? I, can't, I, can't, I don't know. How, I'll say Louis. Please comment if I've got it wrong and I'll correct it. Um, you got a question. As I am in a class called Arctic Fox Class, do you have any facts about them? I feel like I need to call Stuart over. <laughs> so, we've got our, so we've got three Arctic Foxes. We've got Flo, Lyra and Teddy. So Flo, and, uh, Flo is t Lyra and Teddy's niece. Um, and she's... Should I come back? Yeah, you, I'll bring Stuart back. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> yeah, um, so quite right, we've got Teddy and Lyra, who are brother and sister, and they just turned six very recently. Uh, Flo, their niece, is now with us. Uh, so Flo's dad is uh, Bard, who used to be with us at the park, but he went up to Highlands Wildlife Park in Scotland a while, little while ago, and that's where he where he had Flo and her nine siblings. That's a big litter, right? Is that normal? Uh, they do tend towards fairly large litters, but that's a little bit, that is a bit <laughs> above average. Um, so yeah, that, that is still pretty big. Um, but yeah, they all made it as far as I'm aware, so that's, that's amazing. That's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, um, I'd be quite surprised at that if I was one of the keepers, to be honest, but yeah. Uh, so that's the sort of the, the little group we have at the moment. Uh, What's their favourite food? There we go. Uh, their favourite food is literally anything. Ah. Uh, <laughs> they, they are not a difficult species to feed. Uh, <laughs> so obviously they're from the Arctic, it's a very harsh environment. They're very opportunistic, they will take anything they can get. So for us, feeding them is very easy because they'll eat anything. In the wild, their favourite prey would be lemmings. Oh, okay. uh, we don't have lemmings to feed to them, so we yeah, can't give them the favourite. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that, that's their favourite food. Uh, you, you can see really good videos of them hunting them because lemmings, lemmings will be underground, under snow, and oh, and you get that characteristic. Yeah, like, you get them sort of going along, listening, and they go, "Oh, there's something!" Jump into the snow. It looks really funny when you just see this fox bum sticking out the snow, and they've got. So they're using their hearing to find them, not their noses. They, they can hear ah, them. Okay, yeah, you cool. see them nice. doing that. They're, I know they're not the only fox that does that. But yeah, and we've um, got to talk about that fur. Oh, the so do they <laughs> they're so fluffy at the moment. <laughs> uh, they're, well, they're decreasing in fluff, well, yeah, and true. my enclosure is the definitely enclosure getting is more and more white. <laughs> yeah, uh, they are sh shedding their winter coat at the moment. So Teddy, in particular, looks really scruffy, and there's a lot of white fluff cropping up around the enclosure, uh, taking a lot of it out, which is quite useful for birds feeding. Um, so I know the chuff might get talked about later, but a lot of Arctic fox has gone to the chuff for them to use for nesting. Um, but yeah, they're, they're going to be decreasing in size, because at the moment <laughs> they all look quite fat and rotund. Once all that, all that fluff comes off from the winter, you see they're actually really quite sleek animals. Uh, there's not a lot to them, they're quite small. Um, so yeah, that's happening, and they'll be a lot darker. Cool, okay, so the there's a colour change as yeah, well. Yeah, the winter coat is a lot darker. Uh, summer coat is a lot darker, winter coat is white. Cool. Well, I hope that answers your questions, Louis. Um, as you can tell, the family tree is a bit confusing, so that's why I brought uh, Stuart on. Um, but yeah, so there are Arctic foxes. And yeah, if you've got any more questions, uh, chuck them across on Facebook and email and, and we'll get to them. Thank you very much. Right. Bye again. <laughs> oh, I've got more. Okay. More, more questions. Okay. Fiona, have the mandarin ducks in the red squirrel walkthrough got used to the other ducks that are in there? Are there other ducks in there? I mean, they might be wild ducks that are going in there. We have pheasants in there. Oh, you might be getting... We've got pheasants in there. How many pheasants do we have? I'm going to bring Judy on. Judy's our senior keeper on our... Hey. <laughs> Round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, Judy. Hello, Holly. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so Judy can talk about our red squirrel walkthrough and all the animals in there. So do you, you work with the red squirrels. Do you work with any other animals? 
um, lots of other animals, the polecats and the ferrets that were mentioned earlier on, uh, badgers, red foxes, but uh, squirrels is, forms quite a lot of our assumption <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> so has any done. updates on the squirrels? So the squirrels, uh, we were talking about conservation earlier on, we do uh, quite a lot of conservation work with red squirrels. Um, we breed them and we're very fortunate to be able to um, assist projects mainly in Wales with uh, reintroducing or um, actually assisting uh, existing populations of red squirrels that are still um, out in the wild in Wales. So um, at the moment we've got two breeding pairs that are very secretive, <laughs> hoping that they're pregnant or going to start having babies. But we also have what we call the squirrel walkthrough, where those mandarin ducks are. Um, and the pheasants, and the walkthrough is uh, is really to actually showcase red squirrels because a lot of people these days have really forgotten about um, yeah, our, they like our the native greys, species. Right? We've got greys, I've been watching <laughs> them well, around the back here. Um, it's been, what, 40, 50 years since red squirrels were found in the south of England. Of course, they're still a present in Scotland and still hanging on in the northern counties of Northumberland and Cumbria. But uh, it would be fantastic, you know, if one day, one day that we could have red squirrels also back in mainland England. So uh, that's the work that we're currently doing. As I said, Wales um, still holding on to their population, so we're assisting in conservation efforts over there. But in the walkthrough, <laughs> uh, we've got a group of male squirrels. Uh, oh. They've been very quiet <laughs> in winter. Uh, because uh, naturally they hoard their food in the autumn months ready for the winter so they don't come out and about very often during the winter months but now with this beautiful weather they're up and about but they're really hard to see <laughs> <laughs> we have five squirrels in the walkthrough and because of all the leaves coming out in the top of the canopies they're way up high taking these buds and these shoots which are really nutritious for them and when I go in in the morning and stand on the platform I just get rained on there's bits of <laughs> leaf so and like bud. Warfare. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they're, in, they're enjoying all that uh, good natural food so we have five boys they're all males uh, we don't want any breeding in the in the walkthrough it'd be very hard to keep track of all all the little youngsters um, so we, at the moment we have um, three um, old timers um, Shep, Douglas and uh, my favourite. Oh, we're not supposed oh, to have favourites. You can have favourites. <laughs> you well, can have favourites. Basil. Uh, oh. we, well, mainly because he's the oldest of the group. In fact, Basil's coming up for a birthday in hope, and he will be eight years old. Oh. I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be open again for your members, members to come and see Basil because at eight years old, he's doing really, really well. He's in retirement there. I mean, you don't often get squirrels living to nine <laughs> years of age. So oh, okay. hopefully you'll come along and see him again. But we also have two youngsters that we bred last year two boys they got released um, into the main enclosure around about February time um, and uh, they haven't got any names so I'm going to say put that out there and ask Chuck anybody your suggestions in the comments names guys for two name a squirrel red squirrel red squirrel yeah. red squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> not the great ones <laughs> no not the great ones uh, and please. they're two boys right they're two, so boys. They're two boy two names. brothers so that would be fantastic if you could give us some suggestions cool so when with the breeding pairs that you've got obviously they're not in the walkthrough no they're not they're they're separate uh we've got one pair on show they're quite young so they may not breed this year oh, okay. and then we have another pair who are slightly older so they got to spirits. learn what they're doing first and yeah uh, and the chocolates first and wine and, yeah <laughs> yes because uh Funnily enough, you can get some very territorial uh, young ladies who oh, will really? be more dominant over the male, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and tell him to go away. Oh. And you can get actually red squirrels that um, form an attraction or don't form an attraction. They're not supposed to pair up, but you can get them um, um, doing that kind of thing. Oh. So they're very interesting and there's all sorts of things that they get up to. Um, so yeah, that's what they're up to at the moment. Perfect. Well, thank you, Judy. I hope that was a no good problem. update for the Red Squirrels. Round of applause for Judy. Thank, thank you very much. much. So I think we're going to have to wrap up now, guys. Oh, do I make my trusty system? Yes, he's telling me to wrap up. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed the live stream. We're hoping, well, hope to do it if, uh, if you guys enjoyed it. But thank you so much for your support up until now. For everyone, it's a really difficult time. And we really, really appreciate all the love and support from, from you members and all the other members of the public that have kind of chucked your support our way. Um, yeah, so we will be live, stri live streaming again soon. And please chuck us your questions because we want to be able to talk to you and engage with you because we really do miss you here at the park. Uh, it doesn't sound very quiet, but it does seem 
being quite here without you guys uh, asking us questions and, and, and enjoying your days here. And hopefully it won't be too long until you can again soon. If you want to help us while we're closed or want to get involved in them, please go to our website or our social pages and it's got all the contact details on there and it also will have all our conservation projects like Judy was talking about our really important red squirrel work uh, and all our updates will all be on there so please drop us a line uh, for, for more, more info on donating or just getting involved. Thank you very much and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Woo!